We're coming up next here on Ghana Tonight on your election command center. The Supreme Court sets tomorrow, Tuesday, November 12th, to deliver judgment on the constitutional landmark case of a vacant seat in Parliament after hearing arguments from the plaintiff's lawyer and the Attorney General. We will have some highlights of today's hearing and, and what to expect tomorrow. And the fundamental question is, what questions are, are tomorrow's ruling expected to answer? That's fundamental. I'm going to be joined by a private legal practitioner as well. My colleague, Dennis Barberi Wadam Esquire, is going to be joining me in a bit. We'll have a conversation on this. But um, today, it was quite clear, even though the, the, the courts had set today for the parties to as it were file a statement of case with respect to this particular ruling the the courts are going to deliver tomorrow what was clear and conspicuously missing was the speakers lawyers they were not in court today the courts took notice of the absence of the sorry the speak the speaker's lawyer and then also the speaker himself this is the chief justice earlier today Take a look. There's nobody here for the Speaker of Parliament. First defender. All right, by court, no representation for Speaker of Parliament. We note also that the Speaker of Parliament has not filed any statement of case or memorandum of issues despite the opportunity given for them to be filed. This matter is for hearing this morning. Can we hear counsel for this for the plaintiff? Well, so that's the Chief Justice there. Dennis Barberi Wadam has been monitoring the events earlier in court today. And, and Dennis, with the absence of the of the speaker's lawyers at today's hearing, is there any effect or any consequential impact on the speaker's position on this matter? The fact that his lawyers were not in court today. Well, really, Alfred, this, this is a matter of choice. And when you look at the rules that govern the Supreme Court itself as, as to this particular matter, the rules are clear as to what happens if a defendant in a case does not file a statement of case. Mm. But let's track a bit and go back to last week when the Speaker himself was in Parliament. He had filed an application to set aside or to vacate the Supreme Court's own ruling. After all was said and done, they had to put the house in order so that they can have the substantive case heard, which was today. Mm -hmm. The court was of the view that it had given them, I mean the parties, the opportunity to file their statement of case, and then they had set today for judgment. That was the initial plan of the court. However, the attorney general was of the view that he wanted to make oral arguments today. So the court mm -hmm. then said, okay, if that is the case, they should come today, have the oral arguments if they wanted to, and thereafter, the House would retire and then give um, a judgment. Mm -hmm. So that's how come many were looking forward to the judgment today. Right. However, it turned out that the Speaker of Parliament did not file a statement of case and they were not in court. So when you look at the rules, I refer to Rule 48 of the Supreme Court Rules, CI 16. Mm -hmm. That particular provision says that it, it's on appearance and statement of defense, that a defendant upon whom a writ and statement of the plaintiff's case are saved, shall, if he so wishes to contest the case, within 14 days of the service of the statement of the plaintiff's case, or within such time as the court, upon terms may direct, file a statement of the defendant's case, which shall be signed by the defendant or his counsel. Now, what is of emphasis here is the fact that if he so wishes to contest the case, mm -hmm. So is the contemplation of the law itself that there are instances where the defendants would, would, decide would elect not, to, not defend. to contest the case. And in such an instance, you do not expect a defendant who does not file a statement of his case to be in court. So, I mean, the speaker not being in court, clearly it's an indication that they do not intend to contest this particular matter. And of course, the rules allow the court to proceed without them. And that was basically what we saw play out in court today. I see. So fundamentally, there, there, there is no injury to the speaker's position or the speaker's case in this matter, even though his lawyers were not in court. Well, so even if there's an injury, that is what he has elected to do. The mm. only thing is we do not know on record 
why the speaker was not in court. Well, Martin Kbembo is going to be joining us on Zoom in a bit. Um, yes, but so, right, so right that, that yeah. wasn't told to the court as to why they were not in court. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was clear that the, 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 that, that's how come you would hear from one of the justices on the bench say to the Attorney General that he would expect the Attorney General to place a call to the lawyer of the plaintiff, I mean, to the lawyer of the, the, the Speaker of Parliament to find out why he's not in court rather than going to the conclusion that it is disrespectful to the court. Right. So okay. really, the point just needs to be made that there are instances where you would have a defendant who elects not to file a statement of case in a particular matter. And mind you, even in the LGBT case, the Attorney General himself was in court. I mean, he was given an extension of time to file a statement of case. It means that there are instances where even when the time for you to file a statement of the case, a case elapses, either by an application mm -hmm. or the court on, by itself can give you an extension or the, the party can pray for that extension to file a statement of case. So really, I mean, that's, 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 that's how come the court was able to proceed even without the Speaker of Parliament. I see. Now, let, let's hear from... Uh, the Attorney General on this matter or, or because he held in court earlier today that the absence of, and, and then it's, it's, it's important that you, you put emphasis on the fact that the, the, it is indeed within the right of a party in a case in court to, as it were, contest their, their position or their, their case in the court of law. The Attorney General was of the view that the absence of the Speaker's lawyers amounted to disrespect of the courts. Now, this is Godfrey Abuadami, Attorney General, earlier today in court. Take a look. Of course, being entirely the prerogative of um, the first defendant to file anything at all, with respect, I think that if the first defendant came before the court and last agenda, represented by counsel, counsel made representations before the court to file service at a certain point in time, elects not to do so, and then for no reason at all, it lets also to appear for the court. Clearly, that is the spread to the court. I made this observation because I'm the attorney general leader of the bar and all that. Such conduct with all respect should not be tolerated by the court. Leave it to us, Mr. Right. Attorney General. Leave it I, to I, us. I, I, also I would rather advise that as a member of the bar for which you are the leader, hmm. you should reach out to him at the close of this proceedings to find out if everything is all right. Well, so that's uh, the the justices there. In fact, that, that was uh, Justice Amadou Tanko yes. um, indicating that the Attorney General should leave that matter to them as to whether it amounted to disrespect or not, right? But yes. but let's bring in Martin Pebble, this private legal practitioner, one of the foremost human rights lawyers we have in this country. Counsel, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, Mr. Kansi. Great. Now, uh, and, and, and I start off on that point that Dennis just ended about the Attorney General's position that the absence of the lawyers of the Speaker in court today amounted to the disrespect of, of the courts. Well, Justice Amado Tanko, you know, sought so to draw his attention to the fact that it is for them to determine whether it was disrespect or not. But w w how does that strike you? Well, that, what, what Justice Amadou Tanku said was the right thing. That was the right thing. You know, uh, I don't know if he played back. There was another part where he asked the Attorney General if he had reached out to Tadeo Sori, lawyer for the Speaker, right? Once Tadeo Sori wasn't present, with the fact that he wasn't present cannot lead to a conclusion that his absence there was willful, etc. So the best thing to do is to find out. So it's good that Justice uh, Ahmad Dutanko drew uh, Godfrey Dami's attention to that option, that if you don't see your learned friend, you should be able to reach out. I know Tado Sorry has a huge reputation at the bar. It's one of our best. So he, uh, generally, you don't find uh, adverse comments about him like that. So it's good that Justice Tanko drew his attention that you have to ask about his welfare, ask about his whereabouts. Don't just stand there and start making comments. <laughs> That's what Godfrey that mean. You know, he's not learning. You see, he's not learning that this is 
side comments are becoming one too many. You see, at the last sitting of the court, all the submissions he made, the Supreme Court just ignored them. Yeah, so he has to learn that, listen, there are times that you have to be gracious. If the man hasn't come, don't go on and on and on about him. No, no, it's not the best. You see, the last time, on the 30th of uh, October, all the arguments he made, you see, the court didn't dignify him with a response. So Godfrey Dami needs to learn that it's not everything you need to comment about. No, it's not everything you have to comment. To, today, there was, there was one point that he made that, in fact, that emphatic statement that, in his view, Speaker Michael Quay's ruling on the Fomina case was illegal. It was unconstitutional. And so cannot form a basis for any decision forthwith. Oh, obviously, it's in his favor or it's convenient for him to make that comment today. You know, because if you were to say Okwe got it right, what it would mean is that then this case would follow the same pattern. That is to say they would lose the, this case of the vacation of uh, the four seats by the various MPs. So it's convenient for the MPP and for Godfrey Dami to say that Okwe got it wrong so that that Okwe's ruling does not come back to, you know, pound or bite them. That's just it. That's just it, really. I see. But on the, on the bit about how that also gives pointers of, of really how, how the, the, the case is going, the path the case is going to take going forward. I, I want us to take a listen to, and and uh, Pebble, if you indulge me, we're also live on 3FM 92.7. Let's take a listen to the Attorney General making the argument that to the extent that Parliament is, is constituted by a certain number of MPs elected to represent constituents through an election, it is only the election and the election process that can alter the constitution of Parliament. Right, and I'll find out if that's consistent with your understanding of what the law really says. But this is the Attorney General on the Constitution of, of, of Parliament. Take a look. So far as Parliament is constituted by a certain number of MPs or members of Parliament representing those constituencies, the composition of Parliament shall not be altered except as prescribed for in the Constitution. So no person or authority, with all respect, has the power to make any decision at all or construe the constitution in a way which will alter or change the composition of parliament except as it is in the constitution. So, Council, that's the Attorney General there, that to the extent that parliament is constituted by a certain number of MPs elected to represent cons constituents, the composition of parliament shall not be altered except as prescribed by the constitution. You see, this is tautologous, right? This is what? Um, uh, let's say security. We are going round in circles, actually, instead of the tautology. It's going round in circles. The <laughs> security is that the Constitution has prescribed in Article 91, sorry, 97 Clause 1 how a member of Parliament will lose his seat. And it's very clear in June that if you are an independent, uh, uh, this is H, let's start with H, uh, this is ACRMS case. If you are an independent member of Parliament and you join a political party, if so far to, you lose your seat. So, Mr. Kansi, as we are talking, isn't it an indisputable fact that Isama has joined the MPP? Yes, it is. Isn't it? It, 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 it is. It is a fact. Yeah. So, that's it. Straight. Pro tanto. If so facto, just by that very fact alone, Isama will lose his seat in this parliament. It's not by any future parliament. It did the Article 97. It's not talking about future parliament. Then you go to the other parliamentarians, 91, uh, this, uh, hey, why do I say 91? 97 plus 1, three. okay? Mm -hmm. It says if you're a member of a political party and then 
you seek to become independent and remain in parliament. As we speak now, the MPP constitution is very clear that if you, if they fill the candidate for parliamentary elections and you, an MPP member, also seek to contest that election, you automatically, and I'm emphasizing automatically, lose your membership. That's Article 3 plus 9. Yeah, 3 plus 9. I'm sure, Mr. Okansi, you've read it in the past. Yes, indeed. So, uh, Mamle, uh, Kwejo Asanti, MP for Sum, uh, Peter Kwachiaka, that's MP Amefi Central, he's NDC, and then the third one, that is, uh, uh, that's the former member of parliament who is now contesting on the ticket of the MPP. Yes, uh -huh. we've dealt with this already. So mm -hmm. these three, Kujasanti, Mamle, and then Peter Kwachiaka, they were members of political parties, and now they filed as independents. So we are clear that the MPP constitution says if you file as an independent to contest an MPP member, you automatically forfeit your seat. So that's it. Right. So I'm expecting the Supreme Court to come up with an interpretation that will give meaning to the MPP constitution. They sponsor the candidate. They sponsor the MP. And they say if you do such a thing, you automatically forfeit your seat. It makes sense. Because, you see, political uh, parties, all right, deal with sensitive information, etc. Okay. So they cannot afford to continue to have moles, open moles. Of course, some people are secret moles. But when you have an open mole in your campaign, very brazen, openly like this, no, they, they, it cannot be tolerated. Right. So if you want to see how the rule will work, can you imagine Atu forcing uh, a leader of the NDC, of course, I'm tempted to say the majority in parliament, but because of the Supreme Court ruling, I will reserve comment on that. But can you imagine Atu forcing saying that he's now going to run on the ticket of the MPP and still wants to be leader and, and, and a parliamentarian? Or turn it the other way, Afenyo Markin, saying that he's running on the ticket of NDC and MPP will continue to tolerate him. No. Even right. you come to, outside these examples, in contract, there's an area called laws in restraint of trade. There are some jobs that have some sensitive information. If you leave the job today, you cannot go and work for an, a, a competitor immediately. No. We have what we call garden leave. Some of them, your contract will say sit at home for six months. Others, one year. And you think the member of parliament, the information that parliamentarians share among themselves, policies, etc. I think there are certain information that are not sensitive. So it's not new that if you leave your party and go to join another party, you should lose your seat. No, it's not new. So Council. I'm hoping that the Supreme Court will be uh, following. We'll see how that, that plays out tomorrow when the Supreme Court delivers its ruling on this matter. But I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us, Martin Pebbles, private legal practitioner, one of the foremost human rights lawyers we have in this country. And, and Dennis, so and, and following on the back of what Martin Pebbles has just said, what questions are the ruling, in fact, the ruling of the Supreme Court going to answer tomorrow or expected to answer tomorrow? Well, so when the ruling is, I mean, the judgment is out tomorrow, um, some three key questions to be answered. One will be the fate of the four MPs will be determined. Mm -hmm. They will not just be determined, they'll be determined finally. And then any subsequent occurrence in Parliament will get to know where an MP would stand. We heard, for instance, uh, Cynthia Morrison mentioned a few days ago that she was still the member of Parliament for Aguna West on the ticket of the MPP. If that judgment comes tomorrow, we'll determine whether she continues to be the member of Parliament or her seat will officially be vacant. There will also be the question of whether or not MPs on the ticket of a party who file nominations with the EC to contest the next election as independent candidates vacate their seats. And that would be in respect of some of the, um, the constituencies. Two, yes, three MPs in this equation. Right. Now, there's also right. the question of whether or not an independent MP, I mean, or independent MPs who's, who file nominations with the EC to contest the next election on the ticket of political parties vacate their seats. And this will be in respect of one MP who we know an independent candidate filing to contest on the ticket of the MPP. That's so by the end of the day tomorrow, all these questions will be answered. Most importantly, 
the fate of these four MPs will be determined and we'll know the numerical strength of parliament and as who, it will be composed. And, and then that question finally... Final will be determined who, who is now is majority. the majority leader. I mean, who is the majority, who is the minority, and who are the leaders in that particular equation. So we'll tomorrow things, promises yeah. to be an exciting day tomorrow. Indeed, and that's going to be live here on TV3 and also on 3FM 92.7. So stay with us and make a date.